Hi, Year 10. Um, this is Mr. Heath. This is uh, just an overview of how to do the data presentation in case you get stuck at any stage with any of the techniques. You've got a document uh, that uh, is in the Years Drive folder which you can open and save called Data Presentation Techniques um, and uh, it tells you the mark scheme for this as well. And basically what you're looking to do here is produce a wide range of presentation techniques with some clever and sophisticated ones. They've got to be accurate and precise in what they show um, uh, with labels and titles and scales and all that kind of stuff to make it effective uh, to get high marks in this. 11 marks out of 15 total, which is just over 20 or so percent of the coursework project. So you've got some less than time to do this. You can use uh, the computers and stuff to produce all these things. Um, and after half term, we'll start uh, our high level control where you have to write up the information. So what you're going to need to do for this is to print off the graphs and maps as you produce them, uh, put them in your folder, and then when we get to the handwritten section, you'll be able to refer to them. So uh, I've outlined here some of the different types of graphs you can make that are relevant and uh, I'm just going to scan down the uh, uh, spreadsheet type graphs, uh, line graphs and so on for the moment and start with some of the maps that you can produce. Um, starting from here it says velocity changes and discharge changes you can do as line graphs but you can also do as um, GIS maps and there's a couple of links here uh, this one here I'm going to start with so if I click on this one I've already opened it up here this is how it'll look when it opens up you shouldn't need to use a, a username or anything to get into this it should just open on any computer um, when it first opens it looks like this actually on the screen and uh, it's got different proportional size circles uh, at the moment the circles are sized according to the pebble or uh, size they call it we call it class size uh, class to size which basically just means the size of the pebbles that you measured along the river to see how they change as they go downstream um, but you want to be able to show other information using these uh, maps and to be able to control these uh, circles yourself uh, to produce your own uh, GIS maps. So if you click on this button up here where my mouse cursor is now content, you'll see the different layers in the map. You'll notice there's a, a geology layer here we've used before. You can click that on and off. We've also got the base maps here so you can change the w uh, way the maps look underneath um, according to how you wish. Okay, So you can play around with these things to get uh, individual uh, looks in your project and styles that work. And if you see under this layer, GIS hold for data 2015, there's a little mini arrow, and here it says change style. If you click on that one, you get a choice of uh, the data you can show with these uh, different points along our river, the six different sites. If I click on one of the sites, you can see all the data in there. That's site 5. You can see it's got the data on the width, the wetter perimeter, and so on. Uh, uh, is the average data for all our groups that we collected this year. Um, so we can show that data in these uh, maps any way we like. At the moment it's proportional circles. Uh, let's pick something else just to show how this works. So let's say you wanted to show the discharge and how it changed downstream, which is a key part of our project, so a sensible thing to be able to show. You can see here that uh, the dots have immediately changed to show the discharge, discharge measurements here. So this discharge at this site, site 6, is 0.13 metres per second. Um, cubic meters per second compared to uh, close to the source where it's 0.05 cubic meters per second much uh, smaller. Um, you might be happy with that map just as it comes up automatically and you can see if I can change something else, hydraulic radius, again the dots change again or uh, 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 that's not a good one to pick, uh, cross-section area and so on. Um, so going back to discharge, uh, you might be happy with it as it looks, but, but uh, all the projects are going to look the same if we just pick the default settings, and you might decide that it's not the most effective uh, way it looks either. So you go onto the options here, and uh, this brings up a, a different menu, and there are things you can change. So for example, you can change the look of the colours uh, of the actual circles and their shapes. Don't play too long on this, but you can pick different things. Don't pick things that are ridiculous, like uh, you know disaster symbols. You can do, but it's not really doesn't make any sense. It's for another cause. So um, pick something that's uh, useful and sensible. Certainly a basic shape is fine. Um, uh, sorry, basic is a, is a good way to look for shapes, um, uh, but there are some others you could use in theory. So let's stick with a circle. Um, if I go back to OK, you can see it's a circle again, and uh, you can control the colours here. 
depending on what you want. So let's pick a red, for example, just to show you how I can change that. So that's one thing you can change. The other thing you can change is the sizes. You might decide that this size at the bottom is a bit too small. Um, it doesn't read very nicely, so you could uh, increase the minimum size. I'm going to move it up a little bit to show you the effect. And can you see how it changes these sizes, the uh, circles? I can make the bigger one bigger and so on and it just gives it a slightly different kind of visual look uh, depending on how you've zoomed into these maps of course uh, it affects how what, what is the best size to view it at uh, but let's assume we're zoomed into the scale so we can see the whole river um, and then work from that um, you can change the transparency you probably don't need to work on that to make it less transparent but you could if you wanted to for some reason um, those are the main things to play around with uh, uh, on this particular um, proportional circles map. You notice it's got a, a sort of key that's embedded here and so what you could do is uh, this stage is do a sort of print screen. I'll just press the print screen button. Uh, I'll go to a blank word document now, uh, paste it in and there's my map. Uh, of course I don't want this bit on the side so I just uh, use the uh, crop function and uh, take a little bit of the map I don't want out. Oops, it's not cropping. And um, and neaten it up a little bit and I've got a nice looking map here with the right scale and key so there we go uh, I can crop a little bit more and there you get the idea so uh, I've got one map there I could uh, perhaps give it a title as well a uh, map to show the changes in the river discharge along the river Holford or whatever so um, again you can give these titles and, and as I say ultimately you'll need to sort of print these out uh, and then include them in your project either as whole pages like this just stuck in with the writing around it underneath it or cut it out or whatever however you wish to set out your final project. Okay so uh, that's one technique there are a few other things you can play with like classified data um, but uh, you probably don't need to worry about that. It's, there are options, different ways of showing the data if you want to play around with it, but otherwise I'd leave it like that. So uh, I can do OK and I can do Done. If I, if I do Done and then uh, go to my legend, uh, you can see here that... Um, uh, did I actually change any of that? Let me see. Yeah. Uh, then uh, you can see the data is displayed here. I was expecting it to show... Let's just try that one again, uh, that it's discharged and it didn't, so I'm just going to try that again. Um, class size, let's go to hydraulic radius, done. Okay, yes, you can see the word hydraulic radius has come up there, and it's come up there as well. Um, so you can do a print screen from this position. I'm not sure why it didn't come up last time, but if it doesn't, then just uh, go through the motions again. Uh, let's go back to discharge, and say done. Um, and there you go, the word discharge there. So you could just do a print screen from this particular position and achieve a similar effect. The only difference is the uh, scale is over here rather than sitting in the bottom corner of your map. So the first version is probably neater and nicer, but uh, either way will do. Yeah, you've got to make sure you've got the scale. If you just print the map like that, let's say and put it in your project, it doesn't mean anything to anyone. What's the map? What are the circles? What are they referred to? It's not clear. So you need to include this bit down here, which is the scale uh, that this data is referring to, uh, and then give it a title as well when you put it into your document. Uh, showing you one other type of map you can create with this, change symbol. Um, you could decide to show the uh, information by colour. You can see these dots have now changed in different colours. Again, they're not particularly clear at the moment because they're a bit small. So if I go under symbols here, I can immediately change the symbol size and uh, click OK and you can see they've changed over here. So again I can play around uh, with that to get the right symbol size. Uh, they're all the same size but they're just different colours this time and again if I don't like the colours here, this is let's say for discharge I might think oh a nice blue tone would be good for that, show uh, increased discharge. Sorry, OK and you can see these uh, lighter tones mean lower discharge and a darker blue means higher discharge and again that's an alternative way of showing it. I wouldn't do both types but I would do one or the other so it might be that you do this one for uh, one variable like hydraulic radius or velocity and another one for another variable like particle size or um, discharge and so on and again I could uh, print screen that image and uh, put it into my project and crop it and paste it and give it a title. Now you don't have to do every single variable like this done there we go, that one's worked nicely, you've got the screen there. Um, but you can play around with a couple of these because you're going to do a range of different graphs and this will tick the box for having done uh, some GIS maps and as I said before you can change uh, the, the background to the maps and other things as well uh, as to get different effects. 
uh, on the map itself. Okay, so um, that's one uh, app. Coming back to the Word document explaining the task, so you can spend a little bit of time making a couple, maybe two, maybe three, also uh, maps showing some of the variables that they change downstream, maybe velocity and discharge, for example, and possibly one other. Um, then uh, one other thing you can do uh, using this second uh, link that I provided here, similar but slightly different web app. Um, it looks similar when you start off, it's like that. You can see they are slightly different in their looks, but not very different. Um, but this one has one other sp uh, special feature. It's showing you the particle sizes uh, for the different uh, sites at the moment. Uh, you can't change that uh, as it stands at the moment. You can add or change a few other things like uh, put on the geology, as I said before, uh, if you so wish, and change the uh, base maps over here for different backgrounds. Uh, there they're coming up now. Um, and this one over here is the key or the legend, so it's showing you the particle size at the moment. It doesn't actually say that, so... Um, but it is. Um, but what this map's really for is, is this particular function over here. Uh, if I click it here, um, I've got the ability to be able to produce some special types of graphs, bar charts and pie charts based on uh, the particular data we collect about the particle shape which isn't very easy to show in any other way. So I click on this and it says River Holford Data. I click on the arrow here and then it says use spatial filter to limit features. I'm going to um, click that and it says only features touching the screen. That's everything here, all these five, six sites. So I don't want that. I just want to pick one at a time. So I'm going to click this one. Only features touching a user defined area. I can use any of these to pick a a particular site so let's say I just scroll around that one which means I'm just picking that site and I'm ignoring all the others and I click the apply button up here and it does a little bit of uh, working out here and it's worked out that uh, at this particular site, site uh, 5 I think it is, uh, I can see how many there are that are sub-angular and rounded as a bar chart or as a pie chart so I can see for example quite quickly there are 30 6.4% of sub-rounded, quite a lot of rounded particles in this section. I'll uh, just show you what happens if I compare that to somewhere else, for example. So I'll use another selection tool, a little square, try and just get this one at the bottom, site 1. I, I managed to just pick site 1, and you can see it's quite different, a little bit more angular particles. If I go on this arrow, I get the pie chart, and see there's more angular particles. So again, um, I can only show one site at a time, but I can sort of pick my right zoom in uh, and scale for this. I do a print screen button again, and uh, I'll go back to my example graphs that I'm collating now on maps for my project. I go paste, and I've got a nice little uh, pie chart for site 1, uh, and uh, the uh, different uh, shapes of the particles. Again, uh, I crop it and give that one a, a title again uh, to, to show the basic ideas, uh, maybe a title, whatever, uh, on there. Um, so I'm just collating these at the moment and then um, getting them to a nice shape and size, and then I'm going to print them out and uh, get, re get them ready to put into my project. So those are two types of map techniques, GIS mapping techniques, you can use. Um, coming back to the instruction document, there are a few other things you can do as well. Um, coming back to these various uh, line graphs or scatter graphs of various kinds. So the other thing you can do is go to the spreadsheet. So you'll find this in the uh, folder in the years drive. Uh, it's called River Holford Data 2015. When you open it, you'll have all your group's data. This is an example of Group 1's data and the raw data. Uh, you don't need to look at that for the moment. You stick to this layer here, which says Master, uh, which has all the nine groups summarized uh, for the different sites. And what you're going to do is do a few graphs, uh, particularly for variables you might not have done for maps, to show how they change downstream. So, for example, let's say we haven't done the width and how that changes downstream. I can pick either the site number or the distance from source as one axis. So I'm going to scroll across here and go distance from source. I then release my mouse and move across to ab average width or another factor like average width perimeter. I then press the control button down on the keyboard and hold it down. While I then click wet a perimeter and scroll across. I then release all the buttons, the mouse button and the control button, and you can see that these two layers at rows are highlighted, even though they're not next to each other. So there's a little bit of a trick there using the control button on a keyboard to highlight two rows that aren't next to each other. I then go to insert, I then go to chart, 
and uh, there's, you would think uh, that you're going to pick a line chart, a line graph on this, but actually it's a scatter you want. If you pick a scatter like this, for example, uh, you can use a straight line one or a curved line one, it doesn't matter. So let's say I pick that one, you can see here that, that is essentially a line graph. Uh, they call it a scatter graph in, in uh, Excel for some reason. And I can see that you've got a nice little uh, just graph showing you on this axis the... Um, distance from the source uh, in, in meters downstream and uh, the various width. You'll notice, uh, sorry, the wetter perimeter in this case. The you notice that at the moment it's not really very clear. I've got um, a title of sorts, average wetter perimeter, but it's not very clear about what. And the other axis aren't clear. So if I go to this button, quick layout, I can very quickly change the layout of the graph so it's got the sort of information I might like. Let's go for this one, for example. Uh, so I've already got now a space for axis title. This is where I'm going to have to make sure it's clear what this is. This is, um, uh, let's say, wetted perimeter in uh, in meters or in brackets meters, um, and this title is going to be distance downstream in meters. Um, so now immediately these axes become clear. This sort of detail is very important for your project, otherwise this graph won't make sense. I don't really need this average wetter perimeter uh, legend there, so I can delete that. That makes the graph look better already. And um, get rid of this. And you'll notice that uh, it's still not very clear. It hasn't got a title, so I can do the plus, and you can see chart title there. And average wetter perimeters come up. Um, I might say something like changes in average wetter perimeter. Um, uh, along the river or foot. So now it's kind of a graph that's kind of making a little bit more sense. It reads well. So um, so I've done that. I then will press the graph. I can do uh, a copy from there. I don't have to do a print screen for this. And let's go to my Word document I'm accumulating my graphs for, paste, and there you go, that's your graph. Probably don't have to do very much more to that. If I didn't have a title, I could type the title in uh, above it. So that's how you do graphs uh, in Excel for this project. Um, those are probably the main ones. I mean, in theory, you could do pie charts here, but since you've got them on your GIS map, I don't think you really need to do that. Um, and uh, you can do you know, it's all right. If you do too many of these at the moment, that doesn't matter. Um, and uh, you can use site or distance from source downstream. Um, and just to remind you, uh, actually, there's one other type of graph you can do, uh, which is quite useful. A little bit more sophisticated than just looking at how things change downstream is, I'm going to scan down here. Um, towards the bottom, I suggest you could do a proper type of scatter graph here um, of one factor against another because things like velocity, for example, are affected by other factors, let's say like hydraulic radius or wetter perimeter, things that would affect the friction in the channel. So I could do a, a scatter graph with a trend line in it there. And uh, so, for example, if I do average velocity here in meters per second, ignore the one in centimeters per second or the flow rate they're just other calculations really you can ignore them don't really need to produce graphs on them they're just different ways of saying velocity but the meters per second is it's much clearer and then hydraulic radius might be affecting it so i can press control hold the control key down scroll across my line and then i've selected the hydraulic radius as well um, and then go back to my insert scatter graph again but this time just with dots in so this time i've got a scatter graph with um uh, one factor against another. This time it's uh, hydraulic radius against um, velocity. Again, I'll need to label each axis and be careful to have done that correctly. Um, and I want to add a trend line to this. I can't remember how to do that. Uh, is it here? Trend line, there it is. Um, it's a lucky guess. Uh, there are various types of trend line I think you can pick. Uh, but basically a straight uh, linear trend line. So here we've got dots and the overall relationship as hydraulic radius uh, goes up, the velocity goes up. Hydraulic radius, bigger number sh means the river is more efficient, less friction, so it is what we would generally expect and uh, that's what this data seems to be showing us. So again, I would complete that graph properly and then put it into my project. So those are some of the main uh, maps and graphs that you'll be creating that this is, uh, document is explained to you. Hopefully you'll be able to get on well uh, using those skills to produce some nice maps and graphs for the project um, from what I've explained. Uh, I'll come on to in the lesson uh, this one, the cross-sectional area, so don't worry about that for the moment. Um, what else is here? Uh, there's some other sort of alternatives to 
presenting things. Uh, there's the geology map here, but you won't really need that because I uh, produced that in the other GIS map. Um, land use, again, you probably don't need because uh, you've done that in the introduction with uh, um, with uh, with your OS maps and things like that. So actually, uh, just thinking about that, that particular link actually comes out like this, which is quite neat. If you've got a problem with Google Earth uh, not working on your computer that you're currently working on, then uh, if you use this link, the land use map, uh, aerial photograph link it opens uh, Google aerial views and uh, you can actually tilt it so it's not that dissimilar to Google Earth it just doesn't allow you to do quite as much so uh, that's a good sort of alternative if you are trying to sort of just get visuals for different parts of the river and its valley but ideally what you want to do is use Google Earth you've done it before so you might have most of this already done in your introduction uh, but if you haven't then this is a good time to produce things like uh, a couple of shots a couple of visual views of the river at different points and uh, the long profile so just to remind you you'll go into the uh, folder and uh, open the Google Earth links you've done that in a lesson before and that will bring up your river catchment uh, river route and so on the different sites if you click on the river route and uh, right click your mouse you've got the option to show elevation profiles so that shows you a long profile of the river that's a really good image to include if you haven't already uh, in your project uh, and label and annotate parts of it uh, you can uh, obviously zoom in uh, to different degrees and maybe sort of look at the upper site and get a nice angle on that as you wish and uh, it's not a nice angle there try and improve that um, and uh, and uh, produce some sort of printout screen prints of, of uh, the river at different sections that might help illustrate what some of the changes that you're seeing in the river and uh, you've got other things as you know that you can add here like um, the OS map layer so again you might want to show it that uh, in that way which shows uh, contours and land uses and so on very neatly and uh, and the geology map of course as well so you've got various options there of, of a couple of shots uh, from different angles, maybe the very upper part, middle and uh, lower course, uh, to help illustrate some of the differences that will help uh, back up some of the points you're making in your coursework project. So that's the reminder of the Google Earth and things you can do. So you can ignore this idea of drawing it by hand that's sort of illustrating here, because uh, Google Earth will do it much quicker and uh, quite effectively really for you. Um, so that's a little bit of overview of the data presentation techniques. Uh, I hope you get on well with them and uh, if you've got any questions I'll come and help you out with that uh, later on in the next lesson. Okay, thanks for listening and good luck with that.